Hey everybody, uh, new comics out today with uh, Tim Drake. So this is a review of Robin Eternal from the uh, Future State. I guess the title might be Future State Robin Eternal, but it does um, involve Tim Drake. So um, a quick spoiler-free um, review is that I enjoyed this. I really like this. Um, I was not familiar with the writer. Her name is Megan Fitzmartin. And when I clicked on um, like a little search, apparently she's worked on the show Supernatural um, and was a writer and a producer on that show. Um, and here, I guess her Twitter is uh, at MegFitz89. And she wrote here, happy future state, Robin Eternal release day. I am so proud of the story and I cannot wait for you to experience it. Please enjoy this self-indulgent thread as I cannot believe this is real. And there she is holding the... Uh, comic and quick uh quick is i i really liked her writing i thought it was great um i thought it was this great combination of uh chuck dixon tim drake especially the stuff with the uh, spoiler and a little bit of that jeff johns arrogant kind of tim drake just a little bit not too much because i kind of you know can get a little annoyed with that but just a little taste of it which i actually liked i'll, I'll point that out so that's the uh spoiler free um kind of uh uh, review and this is on DC Comics website so if you kind of look it does say that there is this drug called the Lazarus resin and it's on its way to Gotham City and the magistrate intends to use this regenerative super drug to make its forces immortal that is unless Tim Drake has anything to say about it join the ultimate heist at 20,000 feet as Robin and spoiler hijack the sky convoy that could mean the end of freedom in Gotham forever if the emotional baggage between Tim and Stephanie doesn't do them in first it's the first uh, it's the fist flying sky diving robot smashing fascist punching adventure that you cannot miss from rising star writer Megan Fitzmartin supernatural and top artist Eddie Barrows detective comics so um, that was kind of my, my little take on the writing. Now, the art, Eddie Barrows, it is a home run. The only thing I'll say bad about the art is um, the cover. Wasn't a huge fan of this cover. Um, and it is not done by, let me see if I can, will it, I don't think it'll pull it up. Yeah, it is not done by Eddie Barrows. Let's, let's go back here. Let me uh, pull up the cover image here. And you can uh, take a look at it here and see. So it is not, uh, let's do slideshow right there. Boop, there we go. Um, so it's not an Eddie Barrows cover, which I feel like, man, I wish they would have just done an Eddie Barrows cover. Um, it does have this kind of cool sort of, I don't even know, like shading effect maybe, I guess. Or it's kind of a little blurry, kind of like almost computerized. So that's kind of cool. Um, and this page right here, this would have been a cool cover because when I saw it, I was like, oh, I don't want to. I think I got to pause it here. I wish there was a. Oh, let me go back. What am I doing? Ah, I always have problems. Slideshow. There we go. Pause. Don't move. Okay. Um, Like, where's Tim's legs? Where's his feet? That was like, what is going on? So if I saw that on the cover, and of course, Eddie Barrows, and he draws these mouths in this weird way where there's like no lips, but it, it looks kind of cool. Um, So I feel like this would have been a better cover um, and would have had my interest more. And of course, here's the cover. This is part of future state. So this is a possible future. Oh. And uh, hopefully I get this right. Sorry, I keep going. Oop, oop. Uh, and if we go to the first page here, these colors and this color scheme of futuristic Gotham reminds me a lot of the uh, Harley Quinn future state issue. I don't know if anybody's read that or seen that. Um, but it has that same color scheme until we got to this page. And look at that. That is right out of Detective Comics run, uh, A Lonely Place of Living. I mean, it could fit so perfectly. And Tim doesn't look that old. So I'm not really sure how far in the future this is. And I haven't been keeping up too much with all the future state stuff. So it's on my to-do list. But um, one thing that might be considered like sacrilegious to Robin fans, look at what is on his back. Now, the costume's kind of cool. It's kind of like his Robin costume. No insignia, no R, but no cape. I don't know if I can handle Robin with no cape. I mean, Nightwing doesn't have a cape, and he was a Robin, but uh, I don't know if I can deal with that. Um, so that's it for the spoiler review. So now let's get into some spoilers. Ready? Spoilers. Three, two, one. 
Tim Drake gets killed again. I mean, how many times are they going to kill this poor boy? Oh, my gosh. They kill him. But guess what? Just like in Lonely Place of Living and all that, guess what they do? They bring him back right away. Boom. I mean, it's like he's dead. He's the one guy who they keep killing him for like a panel. That's it. He's a, Tim Drake. He's like he should be a resurrection man. Um, but we'll get to his death in, in just a little bit. Um, I asked Rob uh, Rob Byers, the um, uh, host of um, the uh, – I lost my train of thought there for a second. Rob Myers, the host of Robin, Everyone Loves the Drake. I just – Rob and Robin. It was too much Robs for a minute uh, to, to kind of do this here. So hopefully I'll be able to record another video later in the week uh, that will have Rob and me talking about this and debating it. Um, but – the story starts off, we got Tim Drake, and he is in um, futuristic Gotham with all this kind of color scheme. And um, like I said, this is a great comic, so you should go out and buy it. Go out and support the, the artists and writers who make this. Looking at YouTube at these things is, is no substitute for having that, that paper in your hand and smelling the comic and how good it smells. Um, I like the name Robin Eternal, kind of tying into the, the Batman Eternal and the Batman and Robin Eternal. Um, maybe a good name for a podcast. Uh, I, we, we try to do a, a Batman and Robin eternal podcast and I just ran out of time. So we're going to try YouTube. Uh, and so here's one of the magistrates, um, uh, creatures that's fighting and they call them cybers, which I'm not really sure what exactly they are. Um, and I got to find out more information about that, but Tim Drake throws a bomb at them and, um, it's kind of interesting. Let me see here. Let me zoom in on the writing here. It says, um, now I realize in these futuristic stuff, they got to really shake it up. They got to make, you know, things just like crazy and out of control. It, no one's going to want to buy a book that just, oh yeah, everything's the same. But it says, um, I guess somewhere Bruce is dead, right? So that stinks. Dick's ranting and raving in Arkham. Jason's betrayed all of us to work for the people that killed Bruce. Damien. And then it's, what does it say? He just kind of guns off. So I guess, you know, if you're kind of upset about Tim Drake's place in all this, he seems like he's better than all the other Robins and kind of better than Bruce if Bruce is dead. But anyway, um, Tim Drake throws this bomb, this EMP at the uh, cyber. It goes off, but he keeps coming at him. Um, and actually the very first thing Tim Drake says, you can kind of see it there is a curse and they kind of blot it out like Hubert, which come on, it's 2021. He can't say a bad word. Um, and so the EMP doesn't work. He's like, what? And luckily guess who's in the neighborhood, Stephanie. And this dialogue between them, it's kind of right out of, um, uh, Chuck Dixon, right? She says, uh, I was in the neighborhood and thought I saw a little bird in trouble. Stephanie? I mean, this is, that's just great. Um, and then um, Robin's like, spoiler. And then he said, I thought you were uh, sticking to civilian life. You know, and tells her, I thought you hung up the cape, which is kind of funny because she has a cape, but he doesn't. They don't really explain why she was here, why she was there. Uh, it's kind of a little convenient, but. Um, it's only the first issue. Got to let it go. And can I just say, I mean, this might be this might be the nitpickiest of all nitpicky, but it's a compliment. I love the way Eddie Barrows draws the rings in puddles in in rain. He should he should only draw comics in rain. I don't know why it looks so good. I, I think I remember that from the detective. That might be a little nitpicky thing. Uh, Stephanie's missing an eye. Not quite sure how that happened. And she's got a big bat almost like a Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns bat on her chest, which is kind of cool. Um, and then this right here, um, this, gosh, this reminded me so much of Chuck Dixon's writing. Um, here's Stephanie looking kind of cool. Love Eddie Barrows. Look at all that shading on uh, Tim's face. Look, that must have taken him I, forever, maybe. Look at all those lines, just those little details. Look at all the shading in the bat symbol. Just awesome. Um, and then uh, after Tim kind of, kind of put Stephanie in her place with, I thought you hung up the cape. He, you can hear Tim's internal monologue. and says, way to say the wrong thing, Tim. Some things never change. That was so Chuck Dixon. Tim was always like second guessing himself and beating himself up for not being perfect. Um, and I just thought, thought that was great. Um, then it gets a little weird because they kind of know that there's this new drug 
and um, that they have to, to stop this shipment coming in. Um, but oh, let me go to slideshow here. But Stephanie doesn't want to help him. So she just kind of says, nope, sorry, Tim, I'm taking off. And then Tim is like, I got to find help elsewhere, which it's kind of weird. She was there, then she's gone. Um, and then there's this girl. I didn't know who she was. Um, and um, turns out she's from the We We Are Robin or was it real? We are Robin. Did I say that wrong? I don't know. Siri. So I, that's on my to-do list to read one of these days. We are Robin. But uh, this is kind of what I thought was the Jeff Johns, Tim Drake, this panel right here. He tells this guy who, if you look on the other page, he's very detailed. I wonder if that's a guy at DC. I wonder if that was Dan DiDio with a little bit of hair or something. Uh, but um, he says to uh, this guy, um, could you, or Tim says to this guy, could you go be a jerk somewhere else? And I thought that was kind of funny. That's not what I would hear from Chuck Dixon, but definitely that was like Jeff Johns, um, Teen Titans kind of Tim Drake. And then, so then there's a couple pages here of Tim talking to her and her name is Darcy. And she was from the, we are Robin. And she kind of tells him about this drug that's made out of the Lazarus pit and that there's a big shipment coming in. Um, what's kind of cool is Darcy is deaf. She does have ear implants that she can hear. So they have to communicate in sign language. And I thought that was really, really kind of cool how they were using sign language. And I'm like, how are you going to make sign language in a book where it's just static images? But they did a really good job of that. That was that was pretty neat. And um, so he kind of guilts her into coming and helping him. And then they're going to fly in this jet pack Right. Robin with the jetpack kind of reminds me of the Batman cartoon. It's kind of cool to where this this, I guess, hovercraft has got the shipment of the drug. It's kind of weird how they're connected. Um, so many jokes, so little time. And then right here it says, need a hand. I'm like, who said that? And guess who it is? It's spoiler. And uh, makes me wonder, first of all, why are Tim and spoiler not together? Um, why is she going to be jealous of this little thing? And earlier in the comic, she made a statement that she didn't want to help Robin because she didn't want to see someone she loved get killed, which makes it kind of interesting, kind of admitting the love. But I'm still, I can't, can't get over that seed. That's just kind of, that's just real interesting. Um, so then they board this hovercraft and then, you know, all about a thousand stormtroopers show up, or I don't know if they're stormtroopers, but um, Tim and Stephanie are take them down easily, and he kind of says it's no problem. All right, are you ready for it, guys? It's coming. I like this panel right here, just the, the, the outlines. It's coming. Get ready for it, because here comes this big cyber creature, cyborg, cyber, I'm not sure what they are, and right there, this panel. I don't even want to zoom in on it. Tim Drake gets killed. Oh, he's dead. They killed Tim Drake again. They throw him into this drug, but you can't keep a good Tim down. Oh, that that's great. Eddie Barrow's art right there. Look at that. Um, can't keep him down because he comes out of this pit and it says ready for round two. But what has this done to him? Robin reborn, literally reborn. So is this rebirth or is this future state? Or is this eternal or is this 52? I don't even know. But um, if we go here, if you look here, it says <laughs> for <laughs> Tim Drake is dead. Long live Robin. I mean, even in the solicitations, they're talking about <laughs> killing Tim Drake. Oh, so poor Tim Drake. So anyway, so Tim Drake is dead. Long live Robin. But overall, I enjoyed it. The art, I love the art. I love seeing Eddie Barrow's art. Um, the story was a, a solid B plus, maybe an A, depending on how the rest of the series shakes out. Definitely kind of kind of fun, kind of cool. Definitely had some uh, just some echoes of um, Chuck Dixon that I really liked. I could see how some people may not like this as much. I don't think Rob is going to like this. So that would be actually a good debate. So, so uh, we got to message Rob and tell him to get on here. Um, but hopefully you liked it. I would love to know your comments, what you thought of it. Let me know, go out and buy the issue, please support the artists and writers who make these comics or we're not going to have them. Uh, and uh, on that note, I'll see you next time.